Okay, we're getting into some different shapes now. So now we have a shape that has a little bit of an angle to it. But before that, we start off, of course, by taping our page down nice and straight and adding in our border and our title block. And measure a quarter inch on each side with a half inch up from the border edge for the title block. And of course, using our triangle with our T-square. To do our vertical lines. Every semester too, I always have students that tell me that they don't need to put the triangle on the T-square to keep their lines vertical. That they can eyeball it and they'll do a good enough job. And for some reason, they never do. So hopefully, that's you. Hopefully by now you've realized that the tools are here to help you <laughs> keep all of your lines nice and straight. They're not there to be an annoyance or in the way. And the more you practice with them, the easier they become to use. Okay, and now that I've got my border and my title block laid out, I'm just going to pick a place to start my front view and just kind of draw a guideline out and a guideline up. And then I'll measure out the front of the object. So the overall length on my front is six and my overall height is two. So I'm just going to make some little marks at six inches, which I also eyeballed again pretty well. After so many years of doing this, I've gotten pretty good at eyeballing measurements. And I'm just going to make just kind of an overall bounding box. And just get rid of a little bit of this guide work. So that's the overall just height and length of this view. Now when it comes to slanted surfaces or inclines, they have a little bit of a technique to them in drawings. So I mentioned this in the previous video where we just kind of went over what orthographics are, but incline surfaces tend to appear as foreshortened in particular views. So what that means is this little incline here, it is gonna be visible in the front view, as well as when we draw the top view, it'll be visible as well. That's why I colored it in green. Um, However, it's not going to show necessarily its true form in either of these. When we look at the side, that's where we'll be able to see the actual length of that incline and like what its angle is and everything. But in the front view, we're not going to be able to see necessarily that it's slanting. We're just going to be able to see that there's a difference between this flat face and this inclined face. So in the front view, we're going to measure how far over it is where this kind of incline stops. So it's two inches over and as well as how far down it goes and it goes one inch down. And so we'll just put some marks in over that two and that one. And in the front view, that's how it's going to appear. So we're not going to see anything regarding that actual slope, but we are just going to see that there's a difference between this face here and this face. Very similar technique in the top view. So I'll just pick a place to start my top. And then just project some guides up. So I'm just lining my triangle up with where these features are. And just projecting some guides. Now what I need to do is measure what my overall depth 
of the block is, so what it is from the very front to very back, which it's three inches. So I'll measure three. And I'll draw my line across. Let me just bring that up to meet. And then again, I need to signify there that there's that slope that I can see in the top. So I already have that it's four inches over from this right side, but I just need to know how far back, what's the depth of it. And so it has a depth of one, because we can see in that little drawing in the corner that from the very back to where that slope is, is two. And if the whole thing's three, then that's one inch. So I'm just gonna make a little mark at one. Line across, get rid of a little bit of that guide work. And again, in the top view, I can't necessarily see how far down that slope goes, but I can just see that this is a different face compared to the rest of this. Now I'll do my miter line. So my miter line goes from where the top and right lines of that front view meet, which is right here on the corner of the object. So I'll just do 45 degrees out. And then where those features would cross, I'm just making some little notations for it. And then where they hit, I'll just project those lines down. Now in this one, since it is, um, since this slope goes over one and up one, since it's those two numbers are even, I can know that this slope is 45 degrees because that's how like a square would work if this was made out of a, a square. So if your kind of run and your rise are equal to each other, then your slope's 45. So technically I could use my 45 degree triangle for it, but that's not necessarily the case for all objects or all inclines. And let me just bring over this bottom and this top. So since I know that it ends here and starts here, at this point then I'm really just connecting the dots. So I could put this on my T-square or I can just kind of line up some type of straight edge with where an object starts and where it ends and just connect the dots. In this case, yes, it is a 45 degree line, but in all cases, like in the next block we do, it won't be. And so really we're just finding where it stops and where it ends. Now with this block as well, I do wanna keep that little triangle in the back. And that's cause, and let me put that a little bit more centered underneath the camera. And that's cause this chamfered edge doesn't go all the way through. It does have that little back. If it went all the way through the block and it just had that slant on the entire um, front face, then yes, I would erase those little lines. But in this case, I am going to keep them there because it does have that back to it. Erase my little miter line. And I have this block as an orthographic. So then I'm going to letter in my title block. Again, neat, all caps. This is called the chamfered block. And then you'll put your name. The date that you drew this on. The scale you drew it at. So again, we did this one to one, one inch on paper is one inch in real life. And how many drawings are associated with the chamfer block? This is drawing one of one. Let me just clean up that title block a little bit. 